Hello, people of God. How are you, precious standards? It is Lakidra again, and I'm so excited to be back on, joining with each and every one. And please know that you all are in my prayers. My family and I have been even praying for each and every one of you and your families. We love you all, and you all are always in our prayers, especially those of you that have been going through pain and sorrow and those who, of you that are hurting and seeking and believing God for restoration in your marriage and you're believing God for the salvation of your spouse. We know exactly what each and every one are going through right now. My family and I stand with you, people of God. And we love you. We love you dearly. And so I want to bring another word of encouragement to each and every one of you. A word from the Lord's written word and promises. The body of Christ Jesus. And so thank you all so much for coming on and joining with me. This word is just for you, the body of Christ. The word of God was written to keep you encouraged, give you hope, give you the grace, give you the peace that passes all understanding and help you wait patiently for every promise to be fulfilled in your life. And you know, the word is filled with nothing but promises. Many that have come to pass already. And there are so many more that God is steady bringing to pass. And that's why we have to hold on to his word and trust in his word. For not one word shall return unto me void, the Lord says. Just like what he spoke in the beginning of Genesis chapter 1 verses 23. The Godhead spoke. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit spoke this plan into being. What God said in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, Let us make man, let us make man, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. And this is even talking about the marriages that shall illustrate the way Christ and the church are one. Marriages came forth from Christ Jesus. He is the author of it all. He is the supreme author and the finisher of marriages. They are illustrating him. They are speaking about Christ and the church united into one flesh. Marriages are holy. They have been called and ordained by God. And when Christ is the center, they will flourish. They will illustrate the way Christ and the church are united into one flesh. It speaks of him. It speaks of who he is. And his bride. Joined together as one flesh. And God made us to be in that image and likeness. Between a male and female. The Bible tells us people of God. In Ephesians chapter 5 verses 30. Through 32. For we are members of his body. And of his flesh. And of his bones. And for this cause. Shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife? And they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, Paul says. But he says, I speak concerning Christ and the church. I speak concerning Christ and the church. And so this is where marriage comes from. It is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. And, and Paul is showing us that because we are members of Christ's body, 
We are members of him, flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. We will illustrate him. We are to imitate him and we will become like him. Just like what God spoke in the beginning. Let us make them in our own image and likeness to be like us. And this is why a man will be joined to his wife. And they will become one flesh. Because we are joined to Christ. We are members of his body. We produce after him. We produce after his own kind. We are fruitful. And we multiply. Illustrating Christ. Illustrating him. He is the seed. He is the firstborn. And so God. Has called forth many sons and daughters. Producing after his kind. After the son of the living God. And so people of God. Just as you are members of his body. You get a chance to receive these same blessings in your marriage. It doesn't matter if your spouse is away from God. As long as you are joined to Christ Jesus. You get a chance to receive all these inherited blessings. Praise the Lord. And your spouse will be saved as a result of you that are connected to Christ Jesus. For a sanctified spouse sanctifies the unbelieving spouse. As you pray the will of God over your marriage, as God has shown you this vision of your life becoming like his, you shall pray and ask of these things, Jesus says, and it shall be given unto you. We receive these same blessings, people of God, that are in the body of Christ. Our life become an illustration of the way his is. We receive all of these blessings as the Bible tells us again in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Paul says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly Places in Christ Jesus. Meaning we who are joined to Christ Jesus. We receive all these spiritual blessings. Marriage is a spiritual blessing. We hear Paul talks about this. In the beginning. Of the book of Ephesians. And as he get ready to close it out. As he, as he gets ready to close out this book. In the fifth chapter, he shows us what spiritual blessings God has given us in our marriages as husbands and wives. That we also receive the marriage Christ and the church had. Our marriages illustrates his because we are members of Christ's body. Flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. And so we receive all these same spiritual blessings to those that are in Christ Jesus. Are you in Christ Jesus? That's all that matters. Your blessings have been given unto you. They are given unto you because you are in Christ. So you have the blessings already. They are given unto you because you are members of Christ's body. You are flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone as you believe upon what he has done for you through his blood. Paul shows us God's plans both for the Gentiles and the Jews who believe in what Christ has done for them. He talks about it also in the same book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 6. He says, and this is God's plans. Both Gentiles and Jews who believe the good news, meaning what Christ has done for them, how he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we were healed. And I love how Peter even talks about it in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24. He says, Jesus bore in his own body. Our sins so that we will be dead to sin and live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. 
Jesus took upon him our sins in his own body. He nailed them to the cross. He suffered, bled, and died for our wrongdoings and rose up from the dead. Meaning, he put to death all of our sin and unrighteousness and ungodly behaviors. He washed them out of the way with his blood. And when he rose up from the dead, he created us anew in him. We have now this new life from his death and resurrection. And we are joined to him and we have received all of these blessings. We have been forgiven and God has given us these blessings because Jesus paid the price with his blood. And so Paul is saying for those of us who believe in this good news, he says we share equally in the riches inherited by God's children. Both are part of the same body and both enjoy the promise of blessings. Why? Because they belong to Christ Jesus. Because you belong to Christ Jesus, people of God. Therefore, you should see your marriage as blessed. Therefore, right now, you should see that as you are flesh of Christ's flesh and bone of his bone, for this cause now, two shall become one flesh. And so, people of God, because you are members of Christ's body, this means your marriage will be an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one because you... God don't need everybody in the house. All it takes is you to be joined to Christ Jesus to receive all these blessings for your house. As the Bible shows us back in Exodus. That there was a lamb for one house. There was a lamb for a house. All they needed was one lamb. And that caused that whole house to be saved and delivered from the destruction that was coming. Upon every house that didn't have the blood Upon the doorposts. That blood represented the son of the living God. And that is exactly what is happening today. No we don't shed blood. We believe in the blood. And by our faith. You and your house shall be saved. You get to receive these blessings and benefits. And as a result of you who believe. In that house. Destruction will pass over you. It will not touch you. Yes, there may have been, yes, there may be things that has come up against your marriage and your household and your family. But because you believe in the good news of what Christ has done for you, you get to enjoy the promises of blessings because now you belong to Christ Jesus through the blood, through you believing upon what he done for you and through his sacrifice, through the price he has paid for you. You can now receive all of his benefits. You can now receive all of these spiritual blessings. And marriage is a spiritual blessing. Where a man now has the grace. That God shall give him by the Holy Spirit. To love his wife as Christ loves the church. And the wife can now come up under his leadership. His lordship. And reverence our husband the way Christ and the church are one. You see, we receive all these spiritual blessings. We get to be in his image and likeness. This goes back to what God spoke in the beginning. Let us make human beings. Let us make male and female in our image and likeness. To where they be like us. They shall rule and reign. They shall subdue and have dominion over all the earth. Let them be fruitful and multiply, meaning fruitful in the things of God and multiply throughout the earth. Walk in the fruit of who God is, his character, his image, his likeness. We shall be fruitful and multiply. This was planned for us long ago before the world was created. And so all we do now is receive these inheritance, people of God. You should thank him every day for what he has done for you over 2,000 years ago. Thank the Lord that your marriage is now 
blessed. Your marriages are now blessed because you are joined to Christ Jesus and your marriages shall illustrate the way Christ and the church are one. Because you are joined to him. You are flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. And for this cause now, men leave their fathers and mothers and they join to their wives. All of this came as a result of being joined to Christ Jesus. All of this came as a result. As a result of us being able to inherit these spiritual blessings. Because of what Christ has done for us. He has made us members of his body. Flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone through his blood. He cleansed us and washed us. He joined us to himself. He reconciled us back to the father. And we are now God's children. In his image and likeness. You see what Christ done? It's all through his works. It's all through what he has done for us. And so now your life is in his image and likeness. Therefore it doesn't matter what it looks like. Nothing can stop the blood. Nothing can stop what God has already done for you. Except your unbelief. And when you don't receive these things, remember Jesus says, believe you've received it and it will be yours. That's what it's all about. Receiving and hearing and believing the good news of what Christ has done for you. This is how we got saved. All we had to do was just hear what Christ done. And when we believed, out of our hearts, we confessed that he was Lord and we became saved. Well, it's the same with your marriage. You just believe out of your heart what he has done for you and that your marriage is an illustration now and has been created to be an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one because you are joined to Christ Jesus. God has reconciled you to himself. And now your spouse has no other choice but to come in. Oh, because God is creating you in his image and likeness. You are his workmanship. And therefore he has given you the grace and the power that dwells on the inside of both of you. That power, that same resurrection power that raised Christ from the dead. When God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all you ask or think according to the power that's at work in you. God can now do the things he had planned to do for you long ago through the blood of Jesus. It is by his spirit. God would cause all these things to come into being as he spoke it in his word. So shall it be. All it takes now is for you to believe in the power of the living God. Receive it by faith. Seeing what Christ has done for you. The blood of Jesus, hallelujah, keeps you protected from the destruction of this world. It's the same way the children of Israel was protected when the blood was placed upon their doorposts. The death angel of destruction could not strike them down, could not strike that house down. And the blood of Jesus will keep you protected and keep the evil one from striking down your marriage, striking down the relationships that God has blessed you to have with one another in your home. Neither will the death angel or the evil work or the evil rule of this world, the evil principalities of this world. Will not be able to strike down what God has given you because of the blood of Jesus. Believing and having faith in the blood is the key. This is why you're able to receive these things. It's nothing else that you do. You just believe in the good news and see your life as being healed. See your marriage as being whole. Because you are joined to Christ Jesus. This new life now that has come forth through the blood of Jesus. Now causes your life to become like his. And you know just like Paul says. In Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 through 9. Don't worry he says about anything. Instead pray about everything. Telling God what you need. And thank him for all he has done. You see, when you see your spouse has gone astray, you speak to God about his will concerning your life, of what is written, what is written in his word. He hears, he hears his will, he hears his word. 
God called for a man to cleave unto his wife and they too become one flesh. And so therefore, woman of God, as you pray for your husband to come to know the Lord so that he can lead and guide that home. And be the head over you as Christ is the head of the church. As you pray for him to be hearing and receiving from God. To bless that home. To guide that home as Christ guides the church. God will hear and answer that prayer. Because it is his will. And the same with you man of God. Praying God's will. His word. He hears it. So by you praying for God to begin. To open up the heart and, and the eyes and the mind of your wife. And bring up under your leadership because you are led by the Spirit. And this is what's going to bring salvation and deliverance and protection to her life. As the church is protected by the Lord. As you begin to pray this art in your home, God will hear it. God will bless that prayer. God will honor that prayer for the Bible tells us this. In 1 John chapter 5 verse 14 and 15 that this is the confidence we have in him. That if we ask of anything that pleases him, that if we ask of anything according to his will, he hears us. And since we know that he hears us, we know that he will give us the petition that we desire of him. And so praying the will of God over your marriage that it line up according to the word of God, God would hear it. And so Paul is saying, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Thank him for the blood of Jesus. Thank him for what Christ has done. How Christ has paid the price for you to receive all these inheritances of blessings. Because you are joined to Christ Jesus. And to bring deliverance into that marriage. That it line up and be an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. God will hear it. You see, when you are in agreement with his will. When you are on the same page with God. When your life is lined up. According to his will. And you are praying for these things. When you see how your life must come in alignment with his will. And you are praying these things. God will hear it. And Paul says that when you pray and thank him. Then you will experience. Then you will experience God's peace he says. Which exceeds anything we can understand. And his peace will guard your hearts and your minds. As you live in Christ Jesus. He says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise and keep putting into practice all you learn and receive from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing. He says, then the God of peace will be with you. And that's what's important, people of God, fixing your mind on what God says about you. Fixing your mind on what Jesus has done for you. Fixing your mind and your thoughts on his will for your life. These things that are worthy of praise. These things that God has already given you. On the things that God has already made available for you. You'll find peace that passes all understanding. There will be peace that rule. That rule in your heart. You will begin to thank God and praise Him. You will find God's peace. Once you see what's on the heart of God. Through hearing His word. And you pray and ask for these things. It will bring such peace. It will guard your heart and your mind. From all the troubles and the anxiety and the fear. You won't have no reason to fear. When you've been praying the will of God over your life. When you have tapped into what God has already done for you. What he has willed and set out to do for you. The same God who didn't spare his only begotten son. But gave him up for us all. You will know that if he done that for you. Surely he'll give you everything else he's promised. You get a chance, people of God, to receive all these spiritual blessings that have been stored up for you in invisible places, meaning the kingdom of God that dwells on the inside of you. They are yours. They are yours. Hallelujah. In the same way that you are members of Christ's body. The same way. You are joined to him. It's the same way your marriage will be. Hallelujah. 
The kingdom is in you. Your life is going to illustrate the way Christ's life is. Now that the kingdom dwells on the inside of you, everything is going to come in alignment with Christ. Everything will be pulled inside of his life. Your life is now a new life. Your marriage is going to be transformed now. Everything that concerns you now becomes transformed. You've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness now into the kingdom of Jesus. Our father's dear beloved son, your life now become like his. And so therefore you can praise God and thank him for all he has done for you. Giving him that marriage and letting him know, hallelujah, all he has done for you. And thank him for doing it. Thank him for now giving you a new marriage and saving your spouse. Your spouse has to come in now. You're in the kingdom. These promises and blessings are yours. The blessings are equally, Paul said. Equally, both given to the Jews and the Gentiles, all those that believe on what Christ has done. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, people of God, you already got it. It's already yours. It's already yours. You don't need to see it. We walk by faith and not by sight. Your eyes don't need to see it. You focus and fix your thoughts on what is already done, what is good, what is lovely, what is worthy of praise. Fixing your thoughts on what is worthy of praise. What is admirable. What is honorable. What is pure. What is true. What is right. What is excellent. All of these things. In the word of God. All these promises of what Christ has done for you. Fixing your thoughts on these things. Getting your mind and your eyes off of what is going on. Because it doesn't matter now. You are joined to Christ Jesus. You have this new life in him. You are part of his body. He is the head of you. Hallelujah. It's because of him. Your life prospers now. Because you are joined to him. As he is. So are you. You are made in his image and likeness. The question is, do you believe it? Now that's what you have to work on. That's going to take renewing your mind. Hearing the word day and night. Coming against all doubt and unbelief. And people of God, if there is any sin in your life, trust me, I'm telling you. This is what keeps you from being able to walk by faith and not by sight. Because sin hinders you from hearing and seeing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Confess any sin that there may be. Get cleansed from it. Get cleansed from it. Have a pure heart before God. You'll find that revelation is able to flow. You'll find that you're able to see the kingdom of God. You'll find that you're able to walk by faith and not by sight. You'll have new eyes to see. New ears to hear. But sin, Paul talks about, lay aside every weight and every sin that can easily be set up. Sin weighs you down. Sin keeps you from stepping into the kingdom of God. Where the blessings are. Paul says anyone who live a life of sin. Will not inherit the kingdom of God. Meaning the blessings of God. Because you won't be able to see it. You won't be able to see it. And how can you, how can you, you believe upon something. If you're not able to see it in the realm of the spirit. If you, know, if you don't have the revelation of it. How are you able to believe it? If, if, the, if the Holy Spirit is not making it bear witness to your spirit. If your spirit is dead and you're not able to hear. Sin keeps you dead. Paul talks about we, we have a life of sin. We dead. And so sin keeps you bound. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. I'm telling you, you'll find faith flowing in your heart. You'll be able to tap into the things of the Spirit. Receiving the blessings of God. No one would need to tell you that you are blessed. You already know you're blessed. No one would need to tell you to praise God. You already want to praise Him. No one would need to tell you all these things and give you these one, two, three steps and, and these mechanic and, and all the mechanical steps. You are already walking them. You are walking them. 
All there will be is confirmation from others, but you'll already be experiencing it. You won't need nobody to tell you what to do. You'll already know what to do through the unction and the spirit of the Holy Ghost. You'll already know what to do. You'll know you've received these things. So people of God, I'm telling you, oh, you have it already through the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your holy word. Thank you for everyone that has come on to join. Lord, I pray that I see, ears can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. I pray, God, that your people are able to receive and believe, oh God, your word. And walk in it and hold on to it and never let it go. Oh, thank you, Lord. It all shall be for the glory of God. Thank you, God. You promised that the kingdom shall be within us. You promised, oh God, that you would do all these things for us. Oh, we praise your name, God. Thank you for keeping your promises. Oh, yes, oh God, you said it. You will cleanse us from all filth. Lord, you said you'll take out of us every stony, stubborn heart. You'll take out of us the stony, stubborn heart and give us a new heart. You, Lord God, said, Lord God, you'll give us a new spirit. You'll put your spirit in us and cause us to walk in your ways. Marriages shall be an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. By your spirit. Lord, thank you for renewing our hearts and our minds. For it is not by might. It is not by power, but by your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for these spiritual blessings. We worship you and adore you. Satan, you have been defeated. We have already overcame you by the blood. Oh, yes, our homes and marriages and families shall be as God said. Oh, we glorify the Lord. He has paid the price. We worship you and adore you, God. And all the people of God are joining together in your precious name. Thank you for helping us to overcome the ruler of this world. The wicked one, oh God. All evil, oh God. Thank you for delivering us out of it all through your blood. No weapon that has been formed against your people shall prosper. And every tongue that rolls up against us in judgment has already been condemned. Oh, this is the inheritance of the saints. Oh, hallelujah. This is our inheritance, oh God. Oh, we praise you for these inheritance. Thank you, God. Oh, that every tongue that rolls up against us is condemned. Oh, the blood of Jesus has rescued us. Has healed us and delivered us. We have been forgiven of our sins. We receive these inheritance and blessings now. Our lives are never the same. No more. They shall never be the same. We are new creations in Christ Jesus. Thank you Lord God for our new homes. Our new marriages. Thank you that our children oh God. Shall be taught of the Lord. Thank you God. A man shall love his wife as Christ loves the church. And wives shall submit. And surrender to their husbands as unto the Lord. Families are healed and filled with love because of the kingdom that dwells on the inside of them. Thank you, Jesus, for these blessings in spiritual places, in our spirit man, in our spirit man. Oh, thank you, God. Praise him, people of God. I'm telling you, if you're still, if you're still saying, Lord, I need you to do this, I need you to do that. I need you, Lord God. Go back to the word of God. Ask the Lord to open up your eyes. Ask the Lord to open up your ears. Because I'm telling you, as surely as the Lord Jesus Christ came over 2,000 years ago and died up on that cross. And rose from the dead. As surely as he has done all this. Surely your marriage has been healed. You have received. You are healed. You are delivered. You are blessed. And you are highly favored. And until next time, remember God loves you. And I love you too. Bye-bye.